It's the Mustang Insider Show presented by Cal Portland, the largest building materials company of cement and construction material products on the West Coast. Now, here's Chris Sylvester, the voice of the Mustangs. Cal Portland presents the Cal Poly Mustang Insider, your one-stop shop for everything Cal Poly athletics. We talk to coaches, alumni, student athletes, and we're into the thick of it with the college basketball season. Cal Poly women's basketball picked up a victory uh, this past week over St. Thomas, a new Division I program uh, in the uh, Beach Classic, the Mustang Thanksgiving weekend tournament. It was nice to see Faith Minma's group get a victory. It was also great to see Cal Poly men's basketball uh, pull out a victory in the inaugural SoCal Challenge before the Thanksgiving holiday last week in San Juan Capistrano as they knocked off the Idaho Vandals from the Big Sky, of course, uh, rivals on the gridiron, but not so much on the hardwood. We want to remind you that this podcast is brought to you by Dignity Health, offering all-star treatment you can trust. To learn more about healthcare services, visit DignityHealth.org slash Central Coast. All right, my guest here on the Mustang Insider presented by Cal Portland just poured in a career-high 28 points, and to go along with that, his favorite in and out order as well. The double-double for Kyle Colvin, who's our guest here on the Mustang Insider. He also is the Mechanics Bank Student Athlete of the Week. KC, thanks so much for taking some time out of your schedule. I know you guys are in this crazy nine-game stretch where you're not playing any home games. Up next on the docket, it's a SoCal swing to California Baptist in Riverside Thursday, then the University of San Diego in a matinee contest uh, on Sunday. So I, I know it's busy for you. And then you can't forget about the student aspect of everything. I think you guys are kind of getting on the verge of, of some of your finals here soon, right? Yeah, thank you for having me. But yep, definitely a busy time. Season's underway, school's wrapping down. So it's definitely a busy time, but it's also a fun time of the year. So looking around the corner so I can just focus on basketball. And it becomes that much more fun when you're winning basketball games. <laughs> Look, uh, this Cal Poly men's basketball team, uh, despite the, the poor record last year and, and what we've kind of seen in the last you know handful of years since the, the team went to the NCAA tournament, we know the wins haven't been there uh, like we've wanted them to be. But you guys are putting yourselves almost nightly to start this season in a position to win games. I know the record sits at two wins, four losses, but it could it could be sw swapped around and it could really be five and one. When you look at the three losses by three points to North Dakota State, by one point to Sac State, in overtime by three points to the Southland favorite, Nichols. So you guys are right there. How good did it feel to finish on top and beat Idaho? I'm sure that the Thanksgiving turkey and mashed potatoes and stuffing tasted a lot better coming off of a victory last week. Yeah, it was definitely really good, but it's more showing the progress we're making as a team I mean there's so many new guys in this locker room um, and it's not going to come overnight but we're learning little by little through each game so it was nice to put a full one together and and get that win against Idaho definitely made the food taste a lot better yeah have you ever played in a game where the the whistles were that frequent there were 61 fouls in that game it, it's as if you guys couldn't breathe on on the opposition or, or else we'd, we'd see a couple more free throws I mean that was one of the longer games you know, lengthwise of the year is almost a two and a half hour college basketball game. Usually games stay at or under two hours in a normal 40 minute game. But but there were so many free throws, I think almost a combined 70 between the two teams in that Idaho game. I mean, had you had you ever played in a game like that? And, and obviously you played it to your strength because you finished with the 28 points. Yeah, no, it was definitely different than anything I think I've ever been a part of. And from the beat, like our game plan was completely changed turn on its side after the first five minutes once they called two on Ali and we saw where the game was headed so coach coach changed the game plan and made the right call so it definitely worked in our favor that night Cal Colvin our guest of the Cal Poly men's basketball team yeah he's he's one of those guys he's a sophomore but it, this is his what fourth season with the program oh. Uh, for folks that don't know and they, they probably do you are KC the slow town kid for a reason. You're, you're all about the Central Coast. You've got 805 in your bloodlines. You went to Mission Prep. You were a standout under a good buddy of mine, Terrence Harris, and we're wishing them the best as they open up their season this weekend in the St. Joseph's Classic down south in Santa Maria. But uh, your father played at Cal Poly. You're a second generation Mustang, late 80s, early 90s, one of the better rebounders 
uh, in program history. Kurt Colvin pops uh, we're talking about right now. But um, at, at what age did you want to play for the Cal Poly Mustangs? And, you know, what was the process like to get here? Because you're on scholarship now. But when you joined the program, your first two years, you were a walk on. You were paying your own way uh, like most students do at Cal Poly. Yeah, I mean, it definitely started early. I have some pictures with, you obviously know the great Mike Wozniak. I have some pictures with him when I was just a little kid and him, me and my dad would sit, watch practices, watch games, and it just grew over time. Um, and I don't know, I mean, I always had big aspirations of wanting to go play somewhere bigger, fun, power five. Um, but then the realization started to come in high school and I was like, dang, like this could be a really good opportunity for me. It's the local team. Um, all my family, all my friends are here to keep that support. And then on top of that, I really take my academics seriously. And this is one of the best engineering schools on the West Coast. So um, I'm also blessed with that opportunity. But then when I got here, I came in as a walk on and didn't really know I wanted to prove myself. That's kind of why I was like, I want to be a division one player. I believe I can. I don't think many other people believe I can. So just took a lot of work and a lot of help from the coaching staff and this, this coaching staff I've had. So I was under Calero for a year and then transitioned to Smith and they put so much support behind me and they give me confidence and they're developing me. So it's been a heck of a ride, but journey has been awesome. Yeah. We were talking about it during the broadcast when you guys beat Idaho had to kind of remind the fans, hey, you know, this was not a scholarship guy when he came to the program. He really had to earn it and, and obviously paying off for, for not only yourself, but for the Cal Poly men's basketball program. Uh, I know it must have been kind of strange after missing last season with an injury the first few games of the year. Probably the game speed was a little a little crazy for you, but it really looks like you're back in the fold, starting with that Santa Clara game where you had 18 points, 16 of the team's 21 in the first half against a really good basketball team. And then obviously really getting into a flow down south at San Juan Capistrano last week. Let's talk about the injury. Uh, how, did, how did that all happen last year? Obviously, we really missed you on the floor, but what was the rehab process like coming back? And what have you noticed about the injury and, and coming back off it? Do you still feel lingering effects or, or is it something that you completely pushed past and you feel just as good as new, if not better than you did before the surgery? Yeah, so it was a very slow process. So I had the surgery in late December last year. I think it was December 28th. So basically started the new year and was just not walking, not doing anything, but day by day was able to slowly get back. And in the summer, I was able to start to do basketball workouts. Um, but yeah, this fall has been big for me and trying to get my conditioning level back up and trying to feel the speed of the game but practice is a lot different from the game so it took me a few few tries to get into my rhythm but yeah I feel super good um I wouldn't say I feel any lingering effects I would say the main thing is just my um uh recovery and preparation for each game I just got to take it more seriously now than I ever thought I would have had to before um got a 40 year olds man a 40 year olds body and a 20 year old man so def definitely just have to take more precaution and get it warmed up get it loose but crystal our trainer here has been great and she's giving me all the resources i might need so yeah it's been a good return hey man we, we see some guys play a long time in the nba and you know lebron's pushing 40 now and he, he at sometimes doesn't look like he's missed a beat so uh you, you've got that that veteran body and uh, I know you're going to try to use that to try and uh, win games. I, I got to the foul line a lot. You, you understood what the situation was last game and for the most part uh, capitalized at the free throw stripe. Kyle Colvin, my guest here on Mustang Insider presented by Cal Portland. Uh, if you're worried about rising PG and E rates, you shouldn't because you can go solar and pay less on your monthly bills. Seamless installs, custom financing, solutions it's the experts at am sun solar they do it all it's amsunsolar.com your local solar experts all right kc uh mission prep man those were some of the good old days right you look back at it you were the the slow tribune slow county player of the year your senior year in high school you were on some really good teams arguably the biggest sporting event on the central coast and we have a debate about it all the time is it a homecoming football game is it the blue green soccer game or is it the mission prep Christmas classic and, and you're you're leaning towards mission prep Christmas classic it's a great high school basketball tournament at mission prep in downtown slow held every winter there are teams that come in from out of state some of the best from SoCal from the valley from NorCal 
you got to play in that and you got to play against some really talented guys that either went on to have really successful division one college careers. Maybe some of them are lingering around playing professionally in the NBA right now. Give me some of your best memories of your time at mission prep playing against some of those top teams in the classic. Maybe it was a deep playoff run, give me some names. Who, who did you, who did you square off against? Who is Kyle Colvin getting buckets against in high school? So I remember my very first, uh, when I was a freshman, I got um, Coach T put me up on varsity for this tournament. And he was like, go get in the game. This was probably halfway through the third quarter or something. And we were switching everything. And Aaron Holiday comes off the ball screen. And my man was the one that screened him. And so he, I switched on to him. And I remember him pulling it out, yelling everybody to go flat, and then just coming at me. And yeah, he scored it. He probably did that five more times on me that game. Um, but there was a lot of big names. And then the best teams we would play was probably Bishop Montgomery. They came up here every year and they had some dudes, um, multiple Division One players. And that was super good um, because coming from the Central Coast, there's maybe one or two players every year that go on to play college basketball. So that type of tournament is hard to come by. So experience was awesome. Sweet. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it being back this year and uh, hopefully you can attend some of those games. I know it's yeah, kind of sandwiched in, for at least yeah, one of the nights. Yeah, I know it's sandwiched in between the Fresno and UCLA road games, and those are going to be tough for you guys. But uh, hopefully, you could make it out and, and support your alma mater one time uh, coming up at the Christmas Classic. Mentioned your your father played at, at Cal Poly. Uh, what did he tell you about his playing days as a Mustang, and how did that maybe influence your decision to to? Because uh, you had scholarship offers from from other programs, non Division one programs. Uh, some, some really good D2 programs in and around uh, the, the West region. Ultimately, how much did the fact that your dad played at this program uh, play into your decision to, to ignore some of the free schooling at the, at the jump of your college career and have a chance here uh, to play for your hometown team? Yeah, I would say um, he, like, his direction of where he wanted me to go wasn't really Cal Poly early on. He His greatest memories were – the um, deep playoff runs that they had. And he wanted me to experience that for myself. So he was a big proponent of go to a lower level, be the man, um, try and help the team go deep in March. Um, but me and my mom were like, I like my dad and I are like beyond close and he's developed me as a person and player so much. And so I think the biggest factor was just staying close and being next to my parents and they can come to seriously every game. Like my dad's on the road, he's in the gym, he's watching too many practices. Like the fact that he's just around and we can be developing um, together and our relationship still exists is kind of one of the main reasons why I stayed. So I would say that was the bigger proponent. And, and dad's a professor at Cal Poly, is that right? Uh, just recently retired. Recently um, retired, okay. Yeah, but yeah, he, he's, he's, he was a professor for the majority of my time here, yep. And uh, that's that's why I'm seeing him at all the road games. Uh, I love it. Yeah, I love no, he, he, used, he used to cancel class so he could travel with us. He did everything. So, yeah, he's he's Cal Poly's biggest fan these days. Yeah, I love talking hoops with him, man. I get to see him uh, in the hallway every now and again. <laughs> and I've yeah. had a chance to see him at some road games, too. And uh, hopefully he brings us some some luck here on the road. I know we still got six more before we play the conference opener here end of December uh at in san luis obispo against long beach state uh, let's talk about what's coming up for you guys this cal baptist team they have a lot of capable shooters from above the arc uh, they don't have a whole lot of size inside so how can yourself ollie tuka tj take advantage of whatever opportunities there might be to get some paint points coming up on thursday i think the biggest thing for us is just kind of patience like i feel like um when we slow down and when we truly really try and execute what um, either play or sets we're running, we can kind of get whatever we want, but it's when the defense is starting to pressure us and kind of get us out of that. So I really think if we slow down, if we make the conscious effort to get it into Ollie, make them have to double team him, then he can fan it out. Like I just think slowing down, playing with better pace is really going to be to our advantage. And that's something I think we're slowly getting better at as a team. So look for it to really come out this weekend. I know it's been a long time since you guys have won a true road game. In fact, John Smith had a chance to talk to him after practice yesterday. He said not one person in that jersey has won a game on the road. So you have your fair share of opportunities here coming up. They're not going to be easy places to go win. Cal Baptist has a great fan base. San Diego's a, a really good WCC program. And then 
the two Portland schools uh, next weekend, followed by, as we mentioned, Fresno State, UCLA. But how important is it for this group to rack up some wins in this stretch, going into conference play, kind of proving to yourselves that, hey, we can win on the road just as easily as we can win inside our house. Yeah, I think, like you said, I think it'll just be a confidence builder, but um, we just got to take it game by game. I feel like any game we go into, we're good enough to win. We have the talent. It's just executing the game plan and performing at that time. So it starts on Thursday. We got to get it. There's no other option. We need to need to come away with the victory. But yeah, hopefully we can take it one game at a time and come away with five or six of these next next few games. And don't be fooled when you read that this guy's a sophomore because you're closing in on a degree. Am I right? Yep. Uh, I'll be graduating this spring and trying to get into a grad program here at Folly. So, yep, that's, that's the goal. I know. I got, I got a little worried when I, when I saw that you were graduating this spring. I'm like, man, we, we need KC to come back for the next two, right? Yep. I, I plan to take all six years here at Folly. I'm not, I know, I know once I graduate and go to the real world, it'll probably take me away from slow and I'm not ready to leave this area. So oh, that's, let's, let's, place. Well, let's, let's add some hardware to the trophy case. Why not? <laughs> yep. Need it. Let's do need it. it. All right. Kyle Colvin, our guest here on the Mustang Insider. Hey, congratulations on the big game, the big win over Idaho last week. And uh, we'll see you guys down in Riverside. Good luck against California Baptist on Thursday. Yep. Appreciate you having me. We'll see you on Thursday. This has been the Mustang Insider Show presented by Cal Portland with a commitment to environmental leadership that has made the organization stronger and is the primary choice of contractors. The Mustang Insider Show. The preceding has been a Learfield presentation on the Cal Poly Sports Network.